manufacturing an EV leads to far higher emissions, actually double the emissions than an equivalent fuel vehicle. Welcome to another episode of Growth X in a Circle. Today we have Akshay Singhal, whose passion for a cleaner environment led him to build a 100 crore EV battery company called Log9. This is a story of how a boy from a small town called Dioban went on to become India's first and only cell maker. In this episode, we dive deep into three core insights into how Akshay built this environment conscious brand. I grew up in a very small place called Deopun, which is in UP, about 30 kilometers from Roorkee. Uh, while my entire education has been uh, in ID Roorkee campus, so my school was just besides the campus and I ended up doing undergrad there. Uh, then did my PhD there, so studied in that campus for 18 years. I was always very keen on uh, you know building things, particularly very um, research oriented that way. First year itself, I got into kind of building uh, or working in some kind of R&D. Uh, I went for an internship to Canada. So I took an academic internship rather than a corporate internship in that way. That got me uh, a lot of free time to think about what to do. Got and I realized over there that academic research is not something which I can do. It's it's very boring. It's quite uh, like it, it's going to drive me crazy. So whether research is good, building products is good, or technology is good, but it has to have a business flavor. Mm. And coming from a business family, that was easier to comprehend for me as well as for my family. Inclination was to look at climate solutions. So mm. we explored water filtration, air filtration spill containment and batteries. Realizing that uh, if we apply our expertise on the material side to make better batteries, mm. that is going to create the largest climate impact in that sense because energy is almost two thirds or more, actually 70% or more of your carbon emissions come from energy. And when you're talking about clean energy or clean mobility, which uses clean energy, batteries become a center point of it, right? You need batteries for EVs and all of that. Similarly, you need batteries to store the energy being generated by solar, wind or whatever it is. That's where we figured that if we are addressing battery as an application area for our nanotech experience, that would create the largest climate impact, which is the ultimate outcome that we are looking at. So we shelved everything else which we have tried on the way and said that let's just focus on batteries, making better and better batteries and leverage our nanotech experience over there. And then they were very supportive as well. So the moment I came back, we started uh, working on Log9 in that trends and trying to form the company. So I spoke to my parents and they said, yeah, more than welcome. They were very supportive. They uh, gave me a uh, go down of my father's to kind of build a lab out of. So we built a lab in home. My mother comes from a chemistry background. So she started running operations of kind of synthesizing chemicals in my go down. And uh, that's how Log9 kind of started. That's very unusual, by the way. It is unusual. <laughs> It will be difficult for people. My parents were my first yeah. co-founders, so to speak. So, when you started, right? So, right now, uh, you are. You just told us that you have, you know, passed past 100 crores revenue mark. Mm -hmm. And so, can you tell us what Logman does? And uh, so that our audience understands it better. So what we, what Logman has evolved over the years is to become the leading battery company in the country. We are the only ones in India who have the technology and the capability to write, start right from making the cells then battery packs and then working with OEMs to get the right EV solution out there. And this is a huge feat because making cells and developing the technology for making cells. So in, in an EV battery, right, or any kind of battery, there will be cells and then there will be battery pack, right? So multiple cells come to to make a battery pack. It's kind of a case of beer cans, right? So one beer can is a cell. You put together a lot of them, then that's a pack. A lot of people can do packs and are doing packs. They import cells and then put it together to make battery packs. When you go to cell level, the challenge and the intricacies of it are significantly more complicated. We are the only ones today having a large scale cell manufacturing available. So the only facility that can do it is with Log9, uh, which we commissioned last year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then going to battery pack and then working with OEMs to come up with uh, the most, uh, so to say, reliable and efficient commercial EV solution. How does a B2B player market itself? Is it only tech supremacy? Is it only the mode that, hey, my cells are way better and that is just a product-led marketing? So how does the channel work for you? See, in B2B, the, the, the one fundamental thing which helps you win over the competition is customer service and support. Nothing else. All your brand, all your customer love, traction will come from customer support and service. Hmm. If you're able to provide that, if you're able to solve the day-to-day -day challenges of the customer, they will love you. They will not go to anybody else, no matter, even if they come up with a significantly better product. Why fleets and why not 
passenger vehicles. The fundamental reason is that for an EV to be really, really cost effective, as well as to really create a positive climate impact, it has to be run enough. Mm. And that kind of utilization is just not there in the personal use case. Are EVs really cleaner than diesel? Which they are not in many cases because the utilization is not high enough. See, what one of the biggest underappreciated fact is that manufacturing an EV leads to far higher emissions, actually double the emissions than an equivalent fuel vehicle. Wow. The manufacturing, not running it, only the manufacturing. But manufacturing. whenever we're talking about EVs, we are only concerned about the tailpipe emissions. We are not factoring in what has gone into, what emissions have happened into mining and then manufacturing and putting everything together and making a vehicle, right? which is where the significant amount of EV emissions sit. After that also, we are using still coal-based power to charge the vehicles. So it's not 100% clean. Right? So it is better than directly burning petrol or diesel in the vehicle, but it's not 100% clean. So it takes a X number of kilometers before an EV becomes cleaner or it has gained parity in terms of total emissions as compared to a fuel vehicle or any petrol or diesel vehicle. Just to give you an example, so a Nexon EV to hit absolute parity, including manufacturing emissions and running emissions would take 100,000 kilometers or 1 lakh kilometers before it becomes cleaner than a petrol variant. Now, no personal use case vehicle in the country, or hardly so, like 99% plus of personal use case vehicles in the country don't drive for 100,000 kilometers in their lifetime. So we're not hitting that number at all. And the same math actually works for the cost as well. Upfront, the EVs are expensive. Running cost is 10% as compared to a petrol vehicle. So if you, it, the math works if you're running it enough. If you're not running it enough, you're neither saving costs Mm. You're neither saving emissions. Emissions. So why the heck do you do it? So whereas in commercial, definitely a vehicle would run 200, 300,000 kilometers in its lifetime. So there's a tangible impact. And because the utilization is high, so there is a net cost saving as well. So you are more bullish on two-wheelers or three-wheelers at the moment as a company? Commercial vehicles. Anything, it can be a two-wheeler for food delivery. It can be a three-wheeler. It can be a four-wheeler. It can be even be a bus or a truck. It can be for that matter, even a material handling, like a uh, forklift or, uh, or a tow truck. Anything which is being used for commercial application is something which I'm bullish on. So when you talk about batteries, you can make batteries for EVs, but you can also make batteries for other purposes, right? Different markets on the battery side are a different mm. level of maturity in the market itself. So EVs is the most advanced in that sense, but batteries for energy storage is just picking up. It's just beginning to kind of come out there. Yeah. Right. Similarly, battery applications for other segments like for forklift and all of those things, again, are nascent. And they are older batteries, lead acid and all of that. And even diesel engines are still running on those solutions. And then because they're hidden in the back end, yeah. not many people talk about it. Right. So hence penetration also takes some time. Yeah, but how is the demand there? Is there a demand? There is a demand. There's a phenomenal demand. By 2030, mm -hmm. I expect that almost half or more than half of your battery demand in the country would actually come from non-mobility applications. You are the first, you know, first Indian company who is making lithium-ion cells. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And we have been initially importing all the battery cells from either China or I think Hong Kong. So oh. when you started this, right, what are your, what do you think, what do you think is still the dependency in terms of imports from these countries? So the dependency still continues. We also continue to import cells because our capacity on the cell side is still smaller in the battery pack requirement. And it will continue to be the case for the next few years because if you look at it, China controls 85% of global lithium-ion production. They control 90-95% of all raw materials going into battery mm -hmm. manufacturing, mm -hmm. cell manufacturing and battery manufacturing. So you can't overnight shift away from that supply chain. Because uh, it's not theoretically impossible, it is practically impossible because the cost structure that will be involved in shifting away from it will be super, super high. And that doesn't provide you a viable, cost viable solution for the market. So you will have to continue to build with their support. Uh, you have to slowly and steadily kind of indigenize and localize uh, parts of the supply chain starting from low hanging fruits and kind of scaling up. Uh, so that's the way to go about it. So if we just kind of zoom out a little bit and if we look at China, you know, like companies like CATL, BYD, etc. Whoever, are, even I think LG makes it. Mm -hmm. So what were the incentives from the government side that kind of pushed them and gave this edge of 20, 25 years? What do you think? See, it's a uh, very unilateral governance in China, which has propelled as well as killed a lot of industries, right? China as a country can take a call that we are removing all support from the tech industry, so to speak. Uh, that's what happened with uh, your uh, Tencent or Alibaba and all of these companies overnight. Yeah. The entire industry was killed. 
and the very next day they said that all the government support will go towards manufacturing oriented industries because that's where we want to gain a global dominance and everything and anything that is manufactured globally will find its roots back in china right so they can do that unfortunately or again fortunately we can't do that in a democracy right you cannot have such unilateral way of uh, taking strategic calls for a country or for the industry and uh, which is the case with india as well so for example like they they keeps on having a debate uh, what is the right solution whether hydrogen should come in whether battery should come in whether swapping should happen like in this industry itself whether should we uh, focus on batteries whether we should focus on making local manufacturing of solar where the research focus on lo- doing local semiconductor manufacturing what all should we do ideally speaking you can't do everything but the challenge is that if you have 1.4 billion people everybody's aspirations and goals will be different so some people are more keen towards solar some people are more keen towards semiconductor some people are more keen towards you battery. can't please everyone basically and you have to somewhere please also everybody right at the same time then there is there will always be a spreading out of resources across all industries to grow so there will be a limit to which mm. an impetus is being paid on a particular industry and there is a diffusion for sure and that's why it takes even longer to kind of build it out uh, as a cell maker right now the you know you've crossed 100 crs and so who are your clients basically the way i look at it is that our clients are fleet operators people Got who it. are actually using these vehicles for commercial applications is our clients and we work with them we sub- we manage vehicles for them where we uh, stitch together the ecosystem of charging financiers oems and everything for them right and that helps us generate our own demand of evs and therefore batteries so we are not uh, uh, so to say a supplier or a vendor for the vehicle manufacturers we are a partner to the vehicle manufacturer to serve the fleet operators so that's the kind of business model that you built any vehicle which goes with a battery in the market we collect about 30 variables data every second from that battery deployed in the field so that gives us so much insight in terms of its utilization in terms of its charging needs in terms of the health maintenance everything of the vehicle right? and those data points and and the ai models that we have on top of it help us bridge the ecosystem right so uh, for example we know how many vehicles would need charging when and that data becomes important to drive utilization for the charge point operators so they come together Got right it. similarly how much the vehicle is being used what kind of revenue it is earning so that data becomes important for somebody who wants to finance these vehicles so that brings together the finance ecosystem into the play right similarly how what vehicle is, like whatever is the maintenance level what is the health what is the efficiency coming out of it so that helps us build a service network out of it so the that data becomes very very critical there is there is a reason why it's called a tesla is not a hardware company it's a software company because the strength of an ev comes from being able to digitally monitor and manage it and unless and until you are able to do it you will not be able to drive the best efficiency out of the vehicle or the battery and you will not be able to even build better batteries in the future any lessons that you can share for any entrepreneur not just an ev entrepreneur but entrepreneur in any space who is trying to figure out his execution and you know started to scale his team and is at a very early stage of his business execution is very very important in our ecosystem so i think i find labor that uh, point more don't be feared of going out there in the market and actually selling the solution it can be a little less mature i would not say mature but less mature but that's okay i think uh, your initial customers will be forgiving enough to kind of uh, work with you as long as you are willing to support them as long as as long as you're not mm-hmm. getting irritated with the problems that arise because your solution was a bit faulty so uh, in general people are nice <laughs>